Today we're going to go over isosceles and equilateral triangles. So first of all, we need to talk about all the parts of an isosceles triangle. It has two congruent legs. So this side is called a leg and this side is called a leg. And you know they're congruent by these tick marks. They tell you that those sides are the same. And then the angles where the sides intersect is called the vertex. So this angle right here, angle one, is the vertex. The sides opposite the vertex angle, the side, sorry, opposite the vertex angle is called the base. So this bottom is the base. And then we have base angles, which are these two, and they're always congruent. Those um, base angles are always across from the legs that are the same, and they are also congruent. All right, so the isosceles triangle theorem says if two sides of a triangle are congruent, so if you know the sides are congruent, then you know the angles are congruent. So what I mean is whenever you have a triangle and you know that AB is congruent to BC, that's these tick marks that I drew, then you know the angles are also congruent at the bottom. And then the converse of that is just backwards. So this one says if you know the angles are congruent, then you know that the sides are congruent. So you only ever need to know one of them in order to know that the others are also congruent. All right, so now we're gonna apply that. So because these are across from the sides, those are the angles that are congruent. So six is also, I'm sorry, J is also 68 degrees. And then to find the measure of angle K, you subtract them from 180. Which is 44 degrees. And then on this one, these are my congruent angles down here, which we don't know them. Um, uh, a triangle all has to equal 180, and both of these are the exact same degree. So both of those together plus 106 has to be 180 degrees. And both of the x's are gonna be the same measure. So first you would subtract by that vertex angle which is 74 degrees. So you always subtract the vertex angle from 180 and then you divide that by two, which in this case is 37 for both of those angles. Um, because these are my congruent angles, these are my congruent sides. So this should also be 12 centimeters. And then to find the measure of angle Y, you subtract them from 180. which is 26 degrees. All right, so now we're going to use some algebra. Um, remember that these base angles of an isosceles are congruent. So to solve, you set these equal to each other. On all isosceles and equilateral triangles, you will end up setting them equal to each other. It just depends what you set equal to each other. So subtract 5x from both sides, you get 3x minus 30 is equal to, oops, 9. Add 30 to both sides, 3x is equal to 39, divide by 3, and that means x is 13. And then since these base angles are congruent, these sides are also congruent. So we set them equal to each other and solve. Subtract 15x from both sides. 8x minus 17, oops, is equal to 7. Add 17 to both sides. 8x is equal to 24. Divide by 8. And x is 3. Oops. Okay, so now they're trying to trick you up by not giving you a picture. Um, so the best thing for you to do is to draw triangle RST 
and mark what's congruent. So RT is congruent with ST. Those are my two sides, meaning that across from them are my congruent angles. So R and S are the angles that are equal. So I have to set these two equal to each other. Subtract 9x on both sides. Add 18 to both sides. And divide by 4. So x is 5. And then I have to find all those angle measures. But we just found out that r and s are the same. So we just need to plug it into one of them. So 9 times 5 is 45, plus 2 is 47. And then for t, you've got to plug that one in. So 17 times 5 plus 1. 17 times 5 is 85, plus 1 is 86. You could have also done 180 minus 47 minus 47. It would have given you the same answer. All right, then on this one, they give you DEF. And they tell you that D and E are the congruent ones. So that means that DF is congruent to EF. So DF is congruent to EF. And those are the two that you set equal to each other. Subtract 4x on both sides. Add 35 to both sides. So x is 9. Uh, we need to find all the sides, but we already found that EF and DF are the same. I'm going to plug it into EF just because smaller numbers. 4 times 9 is 36 minus 8 is 28. Yeah, 28. So 28 and 28, and these are sides, so you cannot subtract these from 180 and get DE. You actually have to plug that in. So 9 plus 4 is 13. And to be fair, that's easier than subtracting from 108 any, uh, 180 anyway. All right, equilateral triangles. So if you know all the angles are equal, then you know all of the sides are equal. And if you know all the sides are equal, then you know all of the angles are equal. Also, every single angle of an equiangular triangle are always 60 degrees. Always. Because they all have to add to be 180. All three of them are the same. So 180 divided by 3 is 60. And then because this one's 9 feet, all of these are also 9 feet. So this one, it's all the angles. They're all 60 degrees. No matter what the sides are, all of them are 60 degrees. Okay, so to solve for x, remember I told you on an equilateral triangle, all the angles are equal to 60 degrees. So 7x minus 3 is equal to 60 degrees. Add 3 to both sides. 7x is equal to 63, divide by 7, and x is 9. And then all of the sides of an equilateral triangle are equal as well. So you just choose two. It doesn't matter which two. I just choose the smaller numbers and set them equal to each other and solve. Subtract 9y from both sides. Add 23 to both sides, and then divide by 2. So y is 12. And that's the end of our notes.